Just making sure everything is in order and it seems to be so. Right. Hello, folks. Uh, welcome back. This is Sajjad, and um, I left the simulation running for more than a day now, and we are on the 764th generation. And I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but um, our cells here are. I've started to do some weird things, right? And I think that's fine and interesting. But uh, yeah, so let's look at it. So this is uh, a cell that has been alive for a long time. So after maybe 300 or 400 generations, the cells started to you know, live longer and longer and longer. And the way they do it is by moving slowly or by you know, staying away from all the danger in a small space and just circling around themselves. So they figured out that uh, if they do that, um, nothing can harm them, right? Or something along those lines, I don't know. And yeah, so, right. And uh, I really don't want to stop it at this point because, you know, 700 generations, that's more than 24 hours uh, worth of uh, you know, it's been running for more than 24 hours, and I really don't want to lose that, right? But, uh, yeah, and I haven't really changed that much code after our session yesterday. Uh, it's essentially the same code. I just uh, fixed one of the bugs, and then uh, I think I pushed it to GitHub, right? And um, if you're interested for the GitHub link, I'm going to post it to the chat just now. Yeah. There's the GitHub uh, to this project. You need uh, the Unity personal version. You don't have to buy a license to run this uh, code. But yeah. Um, so let's just enjoy the view for a second. You can see like they start moving in circles and Try not to collide with each other. So when they're moving toward the, one another, I notice that they change color. So maybe warning the other one to change course or something like that. I don't know how we are going to interpret this. Yeah, you see, uh, when this entered the field of vision of that one, that changed color and then ran away. Unfortunately, it hit a wall, but you know, what can you do? So let's actually see if we can. Um, Right. I'm not going to stop it. I'm just going to look at different things that we have. So again, the master controller, you can see we are running a population of 30. So uh, at the start of each session, 30 different cells are generated on the ground. And you know, we um, give them 500 foods. And they have a room with size 25, and they have a max HP of 20 at the start. But you know they can, um, they can eat food and they can eat corpses to increase that number. Yeah, so that's what we've been doing. And maximize. Right, you see when they they see each other, they send warning signals, and then they try not to collide with each other. You see how these two are avoiding each other, like on the uh, lower right corner. Yeah. So not only are they optimizing their behavior, they are optimizing their group's behavior. And you know, when a coll collision happens and one of them dies, the other one immediately eats that because that's 15 points right there. So, yeah. Okay. And I really don't want to stop this at this point, but I, I am I am interested on in extending it. Um, see, that's that's really beautiful, the way they signal each other to not collide them. And then, uh, hello, Alirza. This is um, an English chat, so I'd appreciate if you could chat in English. Right. 
but yeah so um yeah and, uh, i mean near the end we always have a few who just lurk around looking at the wall uh wait for their life to go out i guess um but yeah right thank you uh, i really appreciate it right um so again when all of the previous generation dies the next one come in and then they they more or less do the same thing with the slight differences or slight changes and uh that goes on for another generation and that we've been um running that for the past 24 hours right so what i'm interested in doing is um i really want to give them new tools to do different things. So, for example, uh, at the moment, they don't have any information about their own health, right? So I think it would be cool if they can they, they could see how much health they have left and maybe treat that as an input. Or maybe we can give them some other information about uh, some other control. So maybe uh, they have to do something else or maybe they have to avoid some objects on the map. Uh, you know, learn these different things, right? So I think uh, I'm going to start with the with the life input uh, because that's that sounds really interesting to me. Uh, if they they could see how much health points they have left, right? So for example, this one uh, has 100 health points, but it doesn't know that, right? It, it doesn't matter if it's going to die in the next second or if it's going to live for a long time, and one thing that uh, someone pointed out to me um, was that we're not clearing the memory of the cells after in each generation. So the cell in the next generation has access to one random memory from the previous generation. And I think that's an okay thing to have, right? Oh, wow, this one has 500 HP. That, that's a lot. I think we need to cap the HP too. Like at, at some point, that would be the maximum amount of HP that you're allowed to have. And after that, you know, just... You're capped out. So, yeah, let's just start coding. And, um, right. So, this is the master controller. And, um, what do you, what we want to change is the brain interface. So, the brain, uh, we need to add one other, uh, thing here uh, after the memory size, maybe, or even before that. So, we need to have one input for the health points, right? So they, they should get an alert if the health is running low. Maybe they want to change their behavior somehow. And also, I'm th I think I'm going to increase their uh, hidden neural network size from uh, 10 to 12. So that gives them some, you know, something more to think about, I guess. And uh, yeah, so. Here, uh, I'm going to change the thing function. So aside from the vision, they should now get a float uh, health percentage, right? And this could be their x0. So this one should start from 1 and go to vision.length. And this one, we need a plus 1 here. And you can say x0 is health p. And how do we develop health P? Well, we need to go to the life controller where we call the thing function and give it health P. Right. And so health P, how can we calculate this one? So I think, um, yeah, we store the health point in the HP uh, variable. So we can probably divide that by 100 and then Cap it at one. So if LP is over one, just replace it with one. So this will give them some additional information to think about. Like they, they could see their health going down and maybe learn how to deal with it in one day or another. So uh, this should work, but we have to kill our simulation after. 767 generations, right? Let's do it. Okay. And we're going to start it again. Let's see if it compiles. 
Mm. Is the compile? Is everything in order? Uh, yeah. I don't see any error messages, so I'm just gonna give it time. Oh, index out of range. Index, uh, I thought about the error. Okay, uh, and I think, I think that's because I changed the, the for loop. To go from one. No, I'm going to do this instead. All right. Still maximize on play. Run. Okay. Let's see what happens. Uh... Index was outside the error bounds at line 48. 48. Uh... Oh, we didn't increase the size of X. Did we? X should also have an extra space, right? So let's see what happens. This time, okay. And let's maximize. So we can see that um, they have an additional information here. So the first one is now their health bar. So they are mostly full. So this one is at 12. Not full, I mean, you know. If this one is at 12, so it sees an orange thingy here, and then this is the vision, and then we have the memory on top of that. Uh, yeah. And I want to see, look at some someone that has a low health. So yeah, you can see when they have a lower health, their the color becomes grows closer to red, and if they have a higher health, like this one is at 23, it's green. Uh, I think the 100 should be blue or something. Yeah, this is at 73 and it's on purple, right? Yeah, so they have this additional bit of information that they can process in um, whatever they, they prefer. And of course, they are not, they aren't going to use it right away because it's the first generation and their behavior is completely random at this point. But yeah. Uh, th their behavior will improve over time, you know, gradually, but you know, we'll get there. So, do you have any ideas of what we should add to uh, the cell's behavior? Anything uh, you want to see happen on the screen? I'd be very interested in uh, hearing what you guys have to say. Right. This one is actually moving pretty good. And it is utilizing the memory field really in an interesting way of this. Yeah. So one other thing that I want to do is to increase the damage they get when they're they're facing a wall. So at this point, um life controller. So Wall penalty is at five, and cell penalty is at ten. I think this should be changed so the wall penalty is at uh, twenty-five or something like that. It's some a really high value. So whenever they, um, whenever they uh, hit a wall, they're going to multiply that value with the force that they have, and this is going to be uh, deducted from their health point. And on top of that, I'm going to add another um, thing here, wall const penalty. So regardless of what the force is, if you hit a wall, you're going to have your health point reduced. And that one is at 25 again. And, you know, this might be a little bit harsh, but I really don't like how they spend their time looking you know just staring at the wall uh i don't appreciate that happening so i'm going to penalize this behavior by a lot to see what happens yeah thank you 
Thank you, Alreza. I'd be happy to implement anything if you want to see yeah, any behavior that you're interested in. So you see, they die immediately when they hit a wall, and this is going to penalize this behavior, and they should learn not to hit a wall in future, right? Yeah. So these two, this is at 92 HP, and you can see that's almost purple, and this one is at 59, so that's good, more or less. Okay. Thirty twenty nine, and that's going to die soon, I guess. Oh, no. It found some more food. Right. So the next generation comes, and, you know, they hit a wall, and this is going to die pretty soon. This one, too. So they should learn not to hit walls. And that's what we are aiming for. And after a while, after a few generations, I'm going to add some walls in the middle here and see if they learn to avoid those as well. Oh, you, you saw that, Yvia? Oh, it, it almost resisted going to hitting the wall. So I think, uh, actually, what, what's happening here is that when they have a small um, space between them and the wall, what if, can, what if they can change their own size? That's a good idea. Uh, I think we can do that. All right. Um, so, but let's let's first see what the wall behavior turns out to be, and then we will uh, look into changing the size. And uh, let's see, how can they change the size? I think we need to change their. Hmm. What should we change? Uh, maximize. So we need to change their transform scale. Is that it? I'm going to look for that in the Unity game object, I think. And transform can be, are we allowed to change it here directly or how does this work? So transform is an object of transform and scale. So we have a local scale that we can change. So Okay. Yeah, maybe we can do that. So, um, local scale that that's just a value, and it's a vector tree. So, yeah, sure. So here's what we're going to do. So we are going to add a, another value called scale here. Public float scale, and it can go from um one as a default one two let's say five for now so i'm going to define a max scale at five so that we can tap it off there we don't want them to you know just grow exponentially large because then that would just break everything right uh, I'm trying to imagine what would happen. Yeah. Okay, so we can do that. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to manually change this one also in the update function. We have to look at, you know, in the end of the update function, or maybe after we've done the thinking. Oh, here. So I'm going to. Say this that transform that uh, what was it called again? The local scale should be 
y base scale times scale. And we are going to ensure that the scale isn't more than one. nor higher than max scale and for the basic scale we can find a vector p3 here called base scale which is a simple vector of size 1 1 and 1 All right so in the beginning, I'm just going to increase this value to 3 and see what happens. Uh, change that to 3. Okay. So they should all be bigger. Oh. Uh, vector. Okay. It should be vector. Right. Let's see what happens. So they can... The name is place vector could not be found anywhere. Uh, line 32. New vector 3, of course. Let's see. Uh, do they look bigger to you? Because they look more or less the same. Oh, I know what's happening. I know what is happening. So. But yeah, so uh, in the in the in their default state, they have a a scale of five. So the base scale should be five five one, not one one one, right? This should be their risk scale, and now they should all be bigger than what you're used to. Three times bigger. Oh, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. So maybe maybe the max shouldn't be five. Maybe the max should be two, actually. And we should test them out at 1.5. Let's see. Oh. What's the compiler? One point five F. There you go. So how's it? Oh, that there. That's still pretty huge. Oh, they are at fifteen. Oh, I know. I know why. Because you have to change it here. I'm not going to change it from there though. I'm going to change this to a private value. And this to uh yeah. This is a private value two for now, so that you know they go away from here. Because Unity assigns um values to your objects and doesn't let you change them from the code, and I really don't like that. So we have to deal with this like yeah. So this this is at 1.5. Right? Yeah, so they are at 7.5, which is, yeah, 1.5. And they can grow up to 10. So this would be the maximum size for them, this one. I think that, that's acceptable, right? So let's, let's change this one to a public value. And then we are going to set that to 1. And now we are going to the brain function. Tell them that you have four outputs, not three anymore. And uh, in the final thing here, so this should be four. And then you have LC that the scale equals to x of three. So. We need to map this value. This is a value between 0 and 1, and we need to map it between 1 and max uh, scale, right? 
So actually, let's make this one public too. Right. So how do we move a value between zero and one? So we are between zero and one. How do we move, we move that, that from zero and one to one to max? So we are going to first multiply it by max minus one. So we will have zero and then max minus one, right? Because zero times max minus one would still be zero, and one times max minus one would be max minus one. And then we are going to plus one it, so it goes from zero to one, and max minus one to max, right? So it would be LC that max scale minus one, and then plus one. So now they should be able to control their size if we don't make any errors, which we have. Um, back to the presentation from max scale. Uh, max scale. Right. I go again. And there we go. Oh, wow. That, that's not what they had in mind at all. So why are you so huge? <laughs> that's a 24. Wow, that's insane. How are you at 24? Yeah, it is being multiplied. Yeah, it is being multiplied by a huge number, I guess. Right. Okay, so this is at 5, and this is at 5 again. Oh, no. Uh, we have to change it from here. So max scale would be max scale. What did we decide on? Uh, we decided to, for the max scale to be at 2. And the default should be at 1. Right. Save that. Save that, run it again. And let's see. Let's see. I mean, it, 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 it looks okay. But I want to see what's going on inside this one's brain. Some of them constantly change their values, and the other ones are keeping are keeping their values the same. Right. I think that's okay. Like, this is an acceptable thing to have. Yeah. yeah that's, that's fine. Oh, and it has a 200 HP. So I'm going to cap their HP too. So that's a... Right. So the master that... Uh, Max HP, what's that at? That's at 100. Um, master max HP should be 100, and then starting HP. We need to have a starting HP as well. Public uh, in starting HP, and we need to put that to 20. So Wherever we have max HP, that should be starting. Sure thing, no problem. Uh, it was really a fun idea. And we were able to implement it quickly, so that's a plus tip. Right. And this one should be starting HP as well. And in the after we add all of the HP things, we are going to cap them. So So if HP 
is higher than max uh, or well it should be master dot wait yeah. if hp is higher than master dot max hp then just change it to max hp and do that like that right because we don't want to them to basically have infinite health because that is possible in this game at this stage Maybe we can even penalize them if they have a uh, XP higher than what we allow them to have. I think Max actually doesn't assume the current context. Um, line 82. Oh, of course. Should be master.maxHP. Right. Let's see. Okay, and maximize as well. Okay, so you know we, we've capped their HP at one hundred, and so they aren't going to go below that, which is awesome, I think. So uh, maybe maybe we should drain their energy faster if they have a higher scale than one. That would be interesting to see because you know at the current rate we review some of their health point at every turn and maybe we can reduce that by a higher number all right let's do that so i'm going to make it so that um um penalty force penalty yeah we are going to reduce reduce it by absolute of scale penalty times scale well times the scale minus one so if they if they are at their normal size we won't uh, apply any penalty to them so um public load scale penalty is at well let's 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 play that point one right and the other thing i want to do when two units collide if they have a size larger than normal their attack should have less force that only makes sense right because you know if then your larger item you move more slow or maybe yeah, because you know, uh, a bullet is more dis uh, more destructive than a brick, right? So I don't know if that makes sense or not. I'm just going to apply that. Thank you, Alireza, for following. Uh, I, I do appreciate it. Right. So when you hit a another cell, no, no, that's not here. When you hit another another cell, so your penalty is affected by their size. Thank you, ID ID man. ID man? I, I'm not sure how to read that. But I do appreciate you following me. Right. So I think that the penalty here should be affected by the other cells size or you know our size i'm just going to uh, multiply this by our size and see what happens so let's say scale minus one divided by um what do i want to divide by Or no, maybe maybe just multiply it by a scale. So if we are at normal size, we take the normal amount of damage. But if we are larger, we are more vulnerable. And if we are at twice the large, we take twice the damage. All right. So hopefully, only with this uh, multiplication here, we should see cells that will shrink their size when they are hitting another cell. So this is a behavior that we should see after, I don't know, maybe 200 generations you know 
that only makes sense to me. Right, so let's maximize and see what happens. Right, so you see, um, well, this is the first generation, so nothing makes sense, but when two cells collide, the larger one takes more damage than the smaller one. So it only makes sense for a cell to shrink its size before hitting another one. Yes, they will They will both get damage, but uh, their damage is calculated based on the force that they have. So, um, you know, when you hit another cell, you, the penalty is the cell penalty, which is a constant number, times the other cell's force time uh times your own well wait what yeah times the other cells force times your skill so this is i think uh this is useless right yeah let's do it that so yeah uh your so if if you move fast and you hit another cell you're damaging that a lot and you could potentially kill it you see, uh, that one killed the other one and then enlarged itself. Oh. Uh, I think we crashed the game. Yeah, we crashed the game. This has something to do with the, the view panel that we have. Sometimes it just crashes for some reason. Um... Let's see. Did you see the other one just killed this one? Right. And they could also eat each other's corpse, so killing the other cell might be in a strategy. You know, uh, because uh, corpses give you 50 health points. So it's a good idea to kill another cell and then eat the corpse because, you know, <laughs> I don't know why, but, you know, uh, you get more food that way. I think these ones give you uh, five food points or something like that. Let's see. Um, so if you hit another food, you get food gain, which is set to... I have to come here. Food gain is five. Yeah, so if you... In a, it, uh, the green dots, you get five food points, but if you kill another cell and eat it, you get 50. So, yeah. it only makes sense for the cells to try to eat each other. All right. Well, so, this is uh, the second generation, so we are seeing a lot of random behavior. So that as time goes on, they will correct their behavior. Oh, not no, they won't correct their behavior. The, the ones who have a better behavior will survive and replace the other ones, right? Okay. Yeah. Right. And I also want to add some walls here just because. Uh, prefab, wall. Want to do that? No. What did I just do? I want to add some walls. Oh, I have to go to the scene, right? I have to add. I want to add to add some walls here, and maybe we can scale them. No, just to have something that they have to walk around. You know, just just to see what happens. All right. They should still try to avoid this wall. But the difference is that this one is surrounded by food, so maybe the region would be, you know, um, not as clear as the as when they're facing that wall. Uh, 
Oh, this one ate two corpses and then just died. That was sad. Right. Okay. You also randomly get some food replenished, um, you know, when the game runs out of food or when there will be go lower than a threshold, the game generates more food on the screen and distributes randomly, so that's also interesting. How much energy does that one have? But why are they not away from the new wall? So um this is still the sixth generation they don't they don't know that they should be avoiding the wall but what happens is that since we select the ones that live longer um so we select the ones that live longer and generally the ones who don't hit the wall will, will live longer right so uh and then we breed their children we breed a new generation from them and we repeat the same process so in the long run you know, after maybe a hundred generations, they will learn not to hit the wall, and they will learn to eat food and not to waste their energy going in circles like that. So because this one is just burning through his energy, right? And they should also learn to shrink their size to avoid, you know, colliding with another cell and all these extra things. But we are still on the seventh generation, so we aren't going to see that behavior just right now. Also, something else that I wanted, wanted to change is the background color. Uh, someone told me that they can't read the text over this color. So maybe we can change that here too. Main camera, background. Maybe we can set the background to, I don't know. More. lighter color or do we need to go darker we need to set the gray yeah hopefully we can still see the the food and the cells clearly please tell me if, if uh, it's not as clear on the screen Any other ideas that we can implement uh, aside from changing size and um, I really like how how they're behaving. Okay. Maybe maybe their their corpse should be as uh, big as they are. Because right now the corpse are all small. But I don't see anything else that we need to change at this point. Maybe we can um Yeah. Or maybe you know, we can just leave it as they are. Right. So let's see if you can change the corpse size. So when you die, 
and that in here. So when you die and you create a corpse, we need to change the scale. So how do we change the scale? Maybe we can look at the instantiate function. Instantiate. Right, so you get a vector tree position, a quaternion rotation, and a transform that is their parent. Uh, I don't like any of these. So what does this return? So this returns an object. Hmm. Maybe... So do we have access to the transform of this object? No? Ah. Okay, never mind. Just let the corpse be the same size as uh, they are at the moment. Right. So if you're on the 15th generation, and you should start seeing some smart behavior anytime now. And we are not. They are still as dumb as they used to be. They just, this one just went to, to the wall. For some reason. So as we make their behavior more complex, so uh, since we added the change in size and we added uh, a vision into their health, it becomes harder for them to uh, you know, optimize their behavior. That's something that can, can still happen after a long while, but you know, at the moment, it's, it's going to be harder for them. So. Um, This sounds pretty smart. I like how this one has a default color yellow for you know its color instead of the red. So uh, changing their color from red to anything else um, has a penalty. So they will they will lose health points if they stay on the, another color. But you know that's something that uh, might be worth it for some of them. We don't know, right? Right, so let's see. Let's see what else we can do. Um, something that, that, that would be interesting is if we can get a, uh, if we can, you know, export this as a web game or something like that, so that you know we can. Uh, can we do that again? Oh, what did I do? So no, it doesn't look like it. I think we have the option to do so, but I don't. So setting WebGL right. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll, I'll do it later. So because I have to download the WebGL module, but you know it would be interesting to uh, export this as a web application that we can open uh, on your own computer and see what uh, what happens. All right, because this is this is 
uh, this all relies on the random um, settings that we assign to the cells in the beginning of the first generation. They, they're just building on top of that, right? Right. Okay. This one just just forced itself on the wall to the wall. I mean, this isn't hitting the wall; it's just standing there. You know, you can see that. You know, it isn't moving; it's just standing there. But that's also pretty dumb. But the other one was just repeatedly hitting the wall for some reason. What is the best strategy for them to live? I don't know. Um, so this is this is really. Um, I don't think this is a problem that you can solve. Like there is an, an optimal strategy. If it was me, and if I was, uh, the, if it, if it was up to me to figure out a strategy, I would just repeatedly eat the food around the map, and wouldn't collide with anything. That's enough to survive for a really long time because you know the f there there's plenty of food. There aren't that many threats. You know, um, nothing is going to actively hunt you. But um, you know that's something that I have a lot of. Um, the neural network in my head is much larger than what they have, and the information that they have is a lot more than, than what they have because they only have a small vision range and a small memory, so it might be really hard for them to follow with that strategy. You know, they might even collide with things that they aren't seeing. Someone might uh, bump into them from behind, for example, or they might go backward into a wall. So there isn't really an optimal strategy that they can figure out. They can just you know, improve the way they react to their surrounding Right. 52 minutes. Uh, my voice is getting tired a little bit. I didn't sleep that well last night, so I don't know if I should keep going or not. But if you have any any other ideas, I'd be happy to implement them and see what happens. And if not, then we can call it a day after maybe 20 more generations. Right. Do you see how this is like enlarging itself and it sees food? So, oh, just died. This is behaving interesting. Right. Add another or more than food for giving. Add another more than food for giving to solve. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean there. Could you, could you expand on it? Could you? Hi, Fatimu. Thank you for coming in. We are at the 28th generation. We are at the 28th generation, and uh, the cells are still dumb. Uh, I mean, this one is actively trying not to hit the wall, which is a good thing, I guess. Oh, and then it just did. Oh, come on. Right, and let's look at this one. Come on. Uh, 
that one. There it goes. What about this one? Yeah. They, they just keep dying. Um, maybe that's because their population size is at 3, which is a relatively large number. So they have a lot of competition. So this is moving really slow, and that's another strategy uh, because you know if you have a higher speed, you are going to lose your health point faster, right? So it's not a good idea for them to move back and forth really quickly. Oh, and there it goes. I mean, give them something to bounce, and I think they will try to find bounces. To get more health, for example, instances of food. Um, so they have some food instances. The, the green dots are food instances. I'm not sure if they're visible on the stream though. Uh, and they have the corpses to eat. We, I'm not sure what we, what else we can add there. Like we can add uh, different sizes of food, but um, that doesn't really have anything to. That doesn't have any added value at this point. Right? Right. One is acting relatively good, so it is actively moving toward food. You see, with a very really low speed, oh, and then it just went hitting a wall. Come on, yeah. I mean, it's not pointless, but um, at this point, they, they have one source of, well, two sources of food, and just adding another one would make it a harder problem to optimize, right? We don't want to make it harder for them to optimize. We want to give them more tools and more information so they can decide better. Right? You know, uh, it's easier for maybe a sponge to survive in water because it's just laying there and just processing the food that comes through the water than, for example, an ant that has to actively work with the other ants to find food and then eat it, right? Uh, if you give it a lot of more options to try and to do, it would be more like the ant and it would be really harder to train and to optimize. But if you just allow it to survive with the basic necessities, like the sponge, then uh, that would be the better thing to do. Or not, not, not the better thing, that would be easier to optimize. And I think these are more like a, a bacteria or something. You know, they're just, they're just moving around, bumping into each other and eating food. Um, and that's a relatively simple thing to optimize for. Right. So one thing that I'm interested in seeing is uh, what would happen if we give them more memory or give them uh, less memory. So at this time, they have um, memory. They have, oh, is it? It could be here. Yeah, they have a memory of size 10. So why is it not show, oh, showing up here? Oh, whatever. So they have a memory of size 10 at this point. And uh, maybe we can increase that to see what, would, what they would do with the added memory. Because that would be 
you know, um, something else for them to work on with. So, yeah, let's let's do it. Let's just give them, let's give them uh, 15 memory points instead of 10, and we have to kill them and run them again and see what happens with what they do with the extra memory that they have. Oh, uh, wait a second. Why did it? Why did the camera color went back? Was it this? And also, did we lose any other change? Um, the HP is about hundred. The max HP is at. So no, you're fine. Oh, um, okay. that was a bug from Unity. The the bottom panel, there. right? So, uh, oh, the wall also vanished, which is a okay. I guess I can add it. Can add a small wall if you want to, maybe here this time. Um, increase the size, the huge of a wall, and maybe we can put it here. All right. This one is just standing next to the wall for some reason. Right. Okay, so uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, commit the changes that we've made. And I'm going to send them to GitHub. So we add a size change and help sensor. And we're going to push that to GitHub. There we go. And we're going to stop the stream here, but do reach out to me. You can send me messages on Twitter or anywhere else that you have my contact information on, and we can try to, uh, you know, implement other ideas that you, you might have. It will be really interesting to see how, uh, what else you can do with these small cells. And if and if you're interested, this is the source code again. So maybe uh, visit that, give it a star or something. And uh, hopefully we'll see you another day. Thank you for coming. Have a great day. Bye-bye.